Hi there, uh, I'll be putting a post blog on my website here about Mark Costi. You know, I'm a Mark Costi fan. I mean, think about it, you know, he, he's a guy who was, you know, playing around with Aeroflame. He was standing there on the lake, hitting balls over it and having Bob Jones walk up to him. I don't know if that's true or not, I don't care about it, but he was a colorful character and he wanted to hit the long, and he did that. That's one of what I wanted to capture when I was doing my modeling project here. I wanted to capture what my Austin was doing, his swing pattern, his swing motion. That's different than what he was teaching. That's different than what he was understanding and was teaching to other people. So if I look at my Austin swing pattern and I look at the students, that doesn't match. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that when I'm doing modeling, I'm looking for, I want to capture my Austin's motion pattern. I didn't want to teach uh, the, what he was teaching or what I was teaching because that didn't interest me. That's not what you do in modeling. Uh, what modeling does is a, uh, is a thing that came before NLP. NLP, some people assume that if you learn NLP, you learn modeling. No, it's not true. Modeling is a pretty skill that allowed that you could create you know, NLP in the first place. Uh, there's some people out there think, uh, who teach modeling uh, in different areas and they don't understand modeling. Anyway, so I studied what my Austin was doing because I wanted to research the Austin and all this stuff because I wanted his long. But I'm not studying uh, my Austin for precision or accuracy. I'm looking at Monorgon there and I found some things that Monorgon was doing that I implemented in the Austin I'm teaching and doing and all that stuff. But I'm still a fan of my Austin. And but uh, being a fan of him and understand that he, you know, didn't understand what he was doing, it's not strange to me. People, you know, if you ask someone, if you ask yourself, how do you learn to ride a bike? Or how did you learn to drive a car? Or how did you learn to, to walk or talk? Most people have no idea. They can just do it now. So they try to, you know, use conceptual thinking to understand what's going on here and try to, you know, oh, yeah. So for me, my costume trainer nowadays are misinformed. They're misinformed. And what I mean by that is like uh, the, the shock uh, quote I put there that my costume was teaching someone and he said, well, I stopped stop my right knee there. And you can't do that. You, you know, you try to replicate that action when you actually move your weight to the right at the same time. Good luck with that. So when you start using kinesiology and medical terms, as I like to say, uh, to describe what the muscle does what in the, in the body motion, and, and I'm like, you know, I think that's too complicated. You know, you, you can't follow. That's another con conceptual model of thinking. Now, if you can do it, you can use it to explain some of the things you are actually doing naturally. I'm, I'm not against kinesiology or medical terms in, you know, if you work as a doctor or as a kinesiologist. But if you talk about the goals and learning the goals, I think that's too complicated. So I think a lot of my constant trainings out there are actually this important. They don't understand actually whatever the teaching because they, they take whatever my coach was telling them as the gospel and say this is you know this is the thing he was doing and I said well, well here's the, here's the thing why is no one in the my coach field not replicating the motion that my coach was having why is Hans the, the guy I coach able to do that and this is the skills that I come from. This is the normal skills or a level of modeling what I do be, uh, that I've been doing for about 20 years. That's what I've been doing in, for example, in dyslexia. I've been identifying what a dyslexic lacks and how to train them to have the same type of thing that you and me have to be able to read it and you know, understand and comprehend what, you know, what a book, you know, the letters say and all that stuff. The word find it. So, so I'm a fan of my course. I mean, you know, if you hit it the long. No, say, Hans is not driven to hit it long. What Hans is doing is driven to, you know, play golf. That's different, right? If you're going to play golf, you want two things happening. You want to hit it long, and you want to be uh, accurate. In the golf field, an accurate golf today when the wind have about zero to four percent dispersion pattern. That means if you win on the tour, Tiger Woods, Ernie Els, you know, uh, Rory McIlroy, you know, Russell, you know, all these other guys 
out there. When they win, they play four days as consistent as they can play, and they have about zero to four percent uh, dispersion pattern with their approach shots and all that stuff. If they play normally, which is mean they go out there and just play one day uh, in the tournament, they have about eight percent dispersion. That means they're not even close to the pin those days. They still manage to get up and down and save two putts and all that stuff. And if they have a, a little bit bad putting day, you know, they can still do a few other parts and all that stuff. But the, the issue here is that when they are really off, they're more than 8% off. They're you know, 20%, something like that. That's why you can see Phil Mickelson hit a 6 iron, you know, 40 yards left, or something like that, you know, all over the map. And so consistency is important, and that's why I looked into what Mono was doing, because he was really consistent off track. I understand what he was doing, so I can, you know, replicate that in some way. And also built a putting model. So modeling is, is uh, some people might take offense in the mic also feel that, well, you know, you can't say that about Mono, but that's, it's true. I mean, when MLP was founded and created, they studied uh, a guy called, uh, was Milton H. Erickson. What Milton was doing for 50 years, this is important, I think, to, to, to know. He was able to, you know, do hypnosis in the side and all that stuff. But he was working with clients that no one else in the United States was able to, you know, help or fix or whatever you call it. So well, they had this really hard case to send them to Milton. And Milton was able to do that. Now, a lot of people tried to study Milton. They tried this conceptual thinking about Milton. Wow, what he's doing. They went there to see him and meet him. And here's the thing about Milton. When he was, he was uh, as referenced as, as many as uh, hypnosis machine. So when you come to see him, he was hypnotizing. You couldn't, you know. He was that good. And uh, here's the thing about that, that so you try to study him when he's doing that all the time. So, uh, well, here's the thing about what uh, John Green was able to do, that he was able to codify the patterns Milton was doing in a way to uh, distill them into uh, the essence of it, if you like. So, other, so they can teach it in a way so that people were able to start replicating what Milton Engineering was doing. And that was one of the foundations for NLP, right? Uh, they have a language model called Meta Model and they have a language model called Milton Model. But all those models are composite models. A composite model it means that you pick, take, pick different picks to make whatever it works, right? So when I uh, study the golf swing and the consistency, I look for Mike Olsen, I look for Bruno Norman, I look for Jack Nicklaus and Potting, and I look at uh, Annika Sternstam, you know, consistent and all that stuff. And uh, since the golf is out, I don't, don't understand how to do that. Uh, so that's what I'm doing modeling. I'm looking at what I'm trying to replicate. So once I understand that, I looked at Hans and said, you know, this looks like what Mike Olsen was doing. Cool. Okay, so I make a comparison on YouTube. You know, this is Hans, this is Mike, this is Hans, this is Mike swing. Uh, I'm pretty, you know, I would say that look the same. It doesn't mean that there are differences though, but my cousin, as I said, was able to, you know, wanted and was able to really hit the long all the time. And that's different. <clears throat> Hans is able to not only hit it long, he can have a 330 yard carry without even trying, right? And uh, that's pretty long uh, by any golf standard. But here's the thing if you hit it too long, uh, you're gonna have trouble, you know, playing golf also. So uh, I also look at accuracy here. So I was able to, with the modeling, also define the consistency at the same time. So he's able to have uh, his skill organized in such a way that can have a 0 to 4% dispersion pattern at the same time. That's not, <coughs> you know, that's, that's what modeling do. It, uh, what I look at when I do modeling is to find a way of defining whatever it is people do so you can replicate the result in teaching that in the model. And uh, I have a few students who are not, you know, tour pros, uh, amateurs, if you like. Uh, I have one guy who is 67 years old, and I'm trying to teach this in the way that he will be able to replicate this kind of motion also. And some people say out there, you, talent, you know, you need to have talent, and I disagree, you can create talent. Because if you can teach someone this kind of motor pattern, they may be able to do it. That means that 
whatever my ghost was doing, Hans Anderson here in this case, is able to do and replicate. And if he's able to do that, it means that other people can do it also, because the model then works. Then it's all about finding a way to teach that kind of pattern to people. So it was a bit longer message than I intended here, but hey, we're going to start somewhere. So, to sum it up, I think my course and trainings are uh, misinformed and they're trying to teach them all that my course was understand at the time and that's not, you know, the same thing as he was actually able to do himself. That's the difference there. And I'm all about that kind of differences. In that kind of way, I'm like a walk on, you know, logic, Spock logic, if you like. That uh, there is a difference there and since there's a difference there, there is often uh, missing information, and since information is missing, how they do that, that's uh, one area you can do more. Like find out what, whatever they are doing so you can replicate that and teach it to other people. But the model I'm teaching doesn't look the way people teach it in my course. I'm not talking the same concept. I'm teaching it to people, I don't talk technique or medical terms, stuff like that. I have to teach them how to uh, tool proof to do things so they can you know, improve over time. That means it's a long process of imperfect practice until they make the, the connections and they're able to understand whatever the body is doing so they can able to replicate the anchor, especially the amateur. They have a lot more, uh, take more time for them to do that. And I'm also applying this for my own goals, naturally. And now, uh, that's what me about my post-admissible training in the field.